Hi, it's Andy Pancholi here at the Market Timing Report. And this uh, news has been breaking uh, across various different news outlets. Uh, I've got here the British Daily Mail, uh, actually it's a global publication. And uh, this came out just uh, a couple of hours ago, two, three hours ago, the 15th of May. That's where we are right now. And it's talking about a very large uh, solar wings eruption, as they call it, a solar storm about to hit uh, uh, the Earth. So it's all like breaking news. And it seems that most people cannot really forecast these storms much in advance of, say, 24, 48 hours. Well, why? Well, first of all, let's talk about in a minute, we'll talk about long range forecasting of solar storms and how it can be done. But uh, what I just want to point out to you that this is a big event and the dangers of this. Uh, so the, the pretty side of it is that you are more likely to see the northern lights in areas that you don't see it, the aurora borealis. It's due to the ionization of the solar wind. And uh, basically, um, <clears throat> we have historically the most famous one was the Carrington event, which uh, happened in the 1850s, I think 1859 or 1869 off the top of my head. But it took out all the electrics and the telegraph system. Very basic, primitive stuff in those years in parts of America. But now a significant solar storm is of great risk. And I'm just going to use the Daily Mail here with full credit to them. Solar storms, there are four different types of them, but they are really important because they can cause damage to satellites. And uh, I, I believe the satellite operators close the uh, <coughs> Those are the um, protective shields in to try and minimise the damage. The charge articles can threaten airlines by disturbing aircraft's magnetic field. This is really important as well. Um, uh, so there, uh, I know there are some large airlines that do look at space weather because propagation of information is uh, gets uh, corrupted at times. And uh, basically, we have seen this before. Electricity grids can be knocked out. It happened in Quebec City. It's happened uh, quite a few times, as I say, also way back there in the uh, time of the Carrington event. Um, they I say they enhance the aurora. That's what we were talking about. Uh, they can disrupt radio waves, GPS coordinates and overload electrical systems. Well, hang on a minute. This is really important because there are parts of the world that are in global tension. There are war zones and aircraft are navigating around them using GPS coordinates. So I happen to know that a lot of airlines fly through Iraq now in what's deemed to be a safe and in inverted commas route to avoid Iranian airspace. But when this starts uh, when um, G GPS coordinates are threatened by space weather and spoofing and things like that, aircraft can stray into hostile territory and therefore at risk. And it also says, you know, a, a large influx of energy could flow into high voltage, high, high uh, voltage power grids and uh, damage the transformers. So there are huge implications. Basically, it could take the Internet system down. Not only that, we've been doing research on space weather for over 12 years now, I'm actually closer to 14. And what we noticed is that we can long range forecast this. I'll show you some of this momentarily. But those of you like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos who are in the space race game, you need to be aware when the space weather is clear and when it's not clear, because historically, when we back tested these uh, algorithms, we found we were able to project not into the not only into the future but backwards and we found that the nasa launches on days when there was disruption and high sort of space weather activity they were especially of a disturbed neighbor it led to failed launches and we've seen this recently as well so uh, uh, i can't remember which i think it was one of musk's rockets was launched right into one of these disturbed days and in fact looking back historically nasa even lost people during these failed launches so this is really important stuff. Not only that, we found that the difference in ionization or the variations in ionization can have incredible impact on human behavior. Uh, you'll see this mass uh, sort of psychology thing kicking in. You'll see extremes in markets. And that's why we primarily study this stuff. This information goes out in our market timing report. Not only that, it increases the sensitivity of the Earth's crust and therefore volcanicity and seismic uh, earthquake events are often aligned with such things. So not only do we see big market moves, we see these other things happening. And also geopolitically, because those of you who follow this work, those of you who have subscribed to this channel, and please subscribe to this channel if you think it's of interest, we'll see that uh, uh, these 
Peaks of intensity often coincide with significant global events. Now, at the market timing report, we uh, when we see these big events coming, and we knew this was going to be a big one, which is why we don't uh, put some time into warning you about this. This was published on the 1st of May, but this actual time window, which peaks, it's been running up into the month, <coughs> peaking between the 16th to 18th of May. Uh, so we are, I think we are definitely going to see some volatility, especially in the crude oil markets. As I say, I'm filming this on the 15th of May, just checking the date here. Um, and this is what we published back there uh, so our people could be prepared. And it was basically talking primarily about the markets, but it was saying that, um, well, there was the market commentary in there where you put this caveat in there. However, this month, we do see a highly unusual geopolitical cycle. It is active all month and peaks around the 16th to 18th. This is a rare occurrence and relates to space weather. Historically, such cycles lead to an increase in geoseismic activity. I've already mentioned that. We could be at great risk from a significant earthquake. Clearly, depending on the geographical region, this could create a shock to the markets. Such space weather <coughs> events do seem to impact human behavior and mass psychology. So we could see some incredible event over the next few days, again, with market ramifications. So therefore, it's really important that this risk is ma uh, managed carefully. And, you know, as again, we repeat it there in the summing up thing, it was so important to say this was published on the 1st of May. But this long range cycle was already known about at the back end of last year. So the key point is uh, be prepared over the next few days. <clears throat> if you're trading and investing, protect your portfolios. Some markets will see some extreme moves. There could be some extreme events in the world. The point is that <clears throat> whilst, it, it, whilst we can be prepared for these things, we, when you know these cycles are coming in, those of my hedge fund clients, you know that you will hedge and be more sort of careful and cautious. Your risk level will be much greater. And because we can forecast in advance, then we know when to put this into place. Whereas people just watching the sun and, uh, you know, projecting this <clears throat> as a or forewarning people as it as they see the uh, weather intensify, uh, just don't have much forward warning. So that's it. Um, that's that. <clears throat> so Elon Musk. Jeff Bezos, if you want to know how to do this stuff, get in touch with us and uh, we're able to provide you with uh, uh, weather forecasts on when we're likely to see disturbed weather and when we're not likely to see it. And by the way, geopolitically, uh, one of the events that happened earlier today was there was um, um, the challenging of a, uh, a tanker vessel uh, that was ostensibly uh, um, <clears throat> reported as uh, being under Russian command and uh, uh, by the so-called allies. So... Uh, that I th uh, and uh, they tried to board it. So I think these are the sorts of triggers that you might see lead into significant escalation of conflict. But there it is. Uh, if you want to know more about this, uh, markettimingreport.com is where we're at. Thank you very much. I hope you find this useful. And if you like it, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.